Welcome everybody. This is our presentation on containers within the CNTT reference model and let us introduce ourselves. Hi and welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Georg Kunz. I'm an open source developer with Ericsson. Uh, very active in various communities and specifically in that context I'm a contributor to CNTT and OpenFE. My name is Gregor Chatari and I'm uh, working for Nokia as a senior open source specialist and in this context I'm a CNTT ARI2 co-lead and uh, similarly to Georg uh, my work is also to be active in several uh, communities mostly in uh, the domain of cloud infrastructures. Okay let's discuss about CNTT and uh, containers in the scope of the reference architectures and reference models and all of these reference things which are in, in CNTT. So CNTT is Cloud Infrastructure Telco Task Force, uh, which is an open source project um, made with the mission to standardize and verify cloud infrastructure implementations uh, to uh, decrease the integration cost of cloud infrastructures and applications running on on uh, on top of that, this would happen in a way that that uh, different actors in the community are collaborating uh, in an open source uh, project and building up specifications, uh, implementations, and verification suites. Uh, based on the last 90 days, uh, the most active particip participants of these uh, this activity. Are, list, are listed in um, in this slide, so you can see that that um, there are participants from the operator side of of the telco industry, from the vendor side of the telco industry, and and other um, companies as well. Um, our aim is to really build uh, CNTT to be a uh, leveled. Um, uh, playing field for all actors, so everybody have an equal opportunity to, to uh, influence uh, CNTT and, and uh, everything is contribution driven. Um, however, um, the, the project is open source. It has two sponsors, uh, GSMA and uh, Linux Foundation. Uh, these sponsors are basically helping the uh, the like the operation of the of the of the community. Uh, GSMA provides a support in terms of um, how to create uh, good specifications, and also GSMA um, releases the the specification, what we call uh, reference architecture. Uh, sorry, reference model and I will discuss a bit later what the reference model is. Uh, so G GSMA releases this uh, specification um, uh, inside, let's say, the GSMA scope. Uh, Linus Foundation, on the other hand, helps the, helps the community to, to build um, uh, the specifications and um, reference implementations and reference conformance tests in a in a real open source uh, manner. So let's discuss a bit what are the main artifacts of CNTT and what is the, the logic of, of the different CNTT um, uh, work streams. So CNTT works in a way that, that um, there is a reference model, which is uh, basically a specification with uh, with the properties of a cloud infrastructure and um, with standardized values uh, set to these different properties. And based on these values, uh, the reference model defines uh, two uh, profiles, which basically um, define how a cloud infrastructure should uh, look like. Based on this reference model, which is um, technology agnostic, there are different reference architectures created, which are um, uh, cloud infrastructure technology specific definitions on how to build infrastructures which are compliant with the reference model in 
practical terms, this means that we have a, an OpenStack-based reference architecture and a Kubernetes-based reference architecture, and both of them are taking input from the reference model and describe how to build a cloud infrastructure which is compliant with the requirements of the reference model. Based on these uh, reference architectures and the reference model, uh, there are reference implementations for both um, uh, the Kubernetes-based infrastructure and the OpenStack-based infrastructure. And these reference implementations basically like uh, acting as a proof that the reference architectures can be implemented. So these are really uh, real integrated uh, software stacks based on the, the requirements of the reference architectures and the reference model, plus, of course, adding lots of um, uh, lots of um, components of their own. Uh, uh, they are like, implementing the the stack. What what some what anybody can download and install and 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 test. Uh, and also based on the reference model and the reference architectures, we have uh, a conformance tests, which uh, which are basically verifying that a cloud infrastructure and the workloads on top of that are compatible with each other. So these, uh, these uh, reference conformance uh, testing have uh, different um, domains. So there is a, a reference conformance test to test uh, OpenStack. Uh, there is or there will be a reference conformance test to test uh, uh, Kubernetes, and there are conformance tests to test workloads running on top of these. So this is to ensure that these layers are are real, really compatible with each other, and they do not expect something uh, from the other which is which is not there. And this is done in a way that that um, we are specifying. Uh, the specifications in GitHub and publish them to read the docs. Also, the reference model is published um, by GSMA. So here in this slide, we provided uh, pointers to the different uh, different documents. So respectively, like uh, RTD means the read the docs uh, document, GH means the GitHub version of the document. Uh, they are in sync, so it basically uh, anybody's preference, which way you would like to to read them. Also, in the uh, reference implementation and reference conformance side, we have uh, uh, projects in OPNFV to cover these activities because CNTT works in a way that all specification work is done, or let's say all documentation work is done in the CNTT. Uh, space in, in GitHub, but uh, implementation of, of the reference implementations and the and the conformance tests are done in uh, in Open, OpenFV as as uh, as OpenFV projects. So as we are talking about containers, let me focus on uh, on the reference architecture for Kubernetes or Array two for short. And here I go back and discuss a bit more uh, these different streams. So usually uh, if like if the work stream has a one in its name, that's about OpenStack. So RE1, RI1 and RC1 are about OpenStack and two is for Kubernetes. So RE2, RI2 and RC2 are for Kubernetes. So reference architecture for Kubernetes is RE2 and um, the scope of uh, of, uh, of this works team is marked uh, with this dashed box in the uh, in the figure because usually in in in, uh, in case of, of Kubernetes it's very very difficult to to find the exact scope of uh, of uh, of a Kubernetes cluster let's say so in in array two we do not define anything uh, which is uh, which provides the resources for the cluster. So it can be either a virtual machine or set of virtual machines or physical uh, hosts. Uh, and we do not define anything uh, which are the lifecycle management of the 
of the Kubernetes cluster itself. So RE2 is strictly focusing on the Kubernetes cluster and uh, its, let's say, extensions and, and, and configurations. So, and we have different sources of requirements. And the first set is, uh, is defined in the reference model. So the first set of requirements are basically uh, like generic requirements, regardless of the technology of the cloud infrastructure. So these can be, these are the same for an OpenStack based um, uh, reference architecture and same for the, the Kubernetes based reference architecture. So these requirements, um, uh, are, for example, CPU pinning support, uh, NUMO MVR resource allocation, SROV support, uh, support for network QS, uh, huge pages support, uh, support for uh, multiple, ma multiple port interfaces. So these requirements are coming from the reference uh, uh, model. Um, I just highlighted some of the requirements. The full list of requirements is is uh, is defined under the leak uh, what I provided in the in this slide, and uh, there are also requirements which are defined by the uh, reference architecture itself, because the reference architecture uh, like defines technology specific uh, uh, requirements uh, like. Uh, scalable and immutable inf infrastructure, uh, CNCF API conformant uh, infrastructure, uh, declarative configuration of the infrastructure, uh, network resiliency. So all of these requirements are are defined by the the array two uh, work stream, and based on these requirements, we are defining. Um, uh, detailed requirements of the components, like uh, for example, we are defining uh, Kubernetes requirements, uh, saying that, for example, Kubernetes must use one of the three latest uh, minor versions. For example, that we have to uh, have topology manager and CPU manager uh, feature gates enabled. Uh, for example, that we have um, to have the device plugin uh, feature enabled, we have to have IPv6 dual stack feature enabled. So all of these requirements um, uh, are defined in in uh, in RA2, um, and also we are defining here uh, different uh, components of the infrastructure because uh, uh, both Kubernetes and OpenStack are are relying on other other components, and in case of Kubernetes, this uh, this goes into the detail of, for example, the network um, uh, implementation. And here we have, for example, inside CNTT, um, a very interesting debate on the CNI multiplexer. So it's a currently ongoing discussion in 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 CNTT if um, if we should define strictly one CNI multiplexer, or we should define uh, several options of, of these, uh, because currently there is no uh, API compatibility between these CNI multiplexer solutions, which are, for example, uh, Multus or DEM. And these, uh, this is a very like live and ongoing discussion, and this is one example. What kind of decisions CNTT uh, makes and what kind of issues CNTT uh, have. And with this, I hand over to Gaur. Thanks, Gege, <clears throat> for the introduction to the reference model and the reference architecture. So now I'd like to uh, take a closer look at the reference implementation and the reference conformance <clears throat> test suite. And um, before we dive into the details here, again, I'd like to take half a step step back and um, put those a little bit in context. Um, Gage has mentioned that already, but um, there are quite a few different terms and projects and communities uh, involved, so <laughs> it can be very helpful to, to look at that again. So we basically have three major pillars here. 
CNTT, as with the reference model and the architecture, as already described, um, then also a document describing specifications on the reference implementation and the reference conformance. So all of that, as Gergi said, is happening on GitHub and is basically a set of documents. Then um, on the OpenEV side of things, um, that's basically where the practical implementation part lives. Um, so based on the specs, we have a reference implementation, uh, we also have the tests and the test framework. And then the pillar on the right hand side um, shows um, the, the receiving, let's say, organization. Um, because as Gergi said initially, the overarching goal of this is to basically um, ensure that platforms and workloads work well together. And in order to prove that in um, a concise framework, um, the OVP, the so-called OpenAV Verified Program, is a compliance program that defines how a compliance test suite um, or the results thereof get reviewed, what the review process looks like, um, the scope, and also provides resources such as a web portal where test results uh, coming out of the reference conformance test suite will be uploaded and, and reviewed by the community. And a result um, out of OVP is basically a batch. Um, we currently have two flavors, an infrastructure focused batch. That's what you would um, try to achieve as a vendor of an infrastructure. So if you a Kubernetes distribution, for instance, and then as also already mentioned by Gege, there's a, a corresponding compliance uh, work planned and ongoing to look at the uh, the workloads themselves. And then if you basically match up a platform and a workload, both having their respective batches, then hopefully things work well. And as you can see, uh, based on the on the errors here, there is um, an obvious relationship. So as I said, the reference implementation specs are input in terms of requirements to the OpenAV community building and integrating the reference implementation. Um, the same is true for the reference conformance, which is input to the test frameworks. And the test framework itself has output or the output of the testing tool chain, so to say needs to be consumable by the OVP tool chain um, to facilitate the reviewing process. Um, so this is how those three things work together. In the middle, uh, you can also still see that the OpenAV has community labs where most of the integration will be done, um, but that's also to be extended in the future with maybe cloud interest uh, providers um, providing resources to that effort. Good, so um, as I said, I'm going to talk about the reference implementation. So on the next slide, I, uh, I'd like to zoom a bit into that. Um, we do have a dedicated project in OpenFE um, working on building the reference uh, implementation. The project is called KubeRef, and it is depicted here in the middle of that slide um, by this light gray, uh, light green, sorry, um, box basically and, and as you can also see there are more boxes inside because um, kuberef the purpose of kuberef is not just really to to build a platform and not even to build a kubernetes platform from scratch but rather we apply the um, the best practices that openv has been uh, applying for the last couple of years it is mainly about integration um, it is about continuous deployment and it's about testing. So instead of <clears throat> building an, an installer for Kubernetes ourselves, um, we basically consume um, various, let's say, candidates from upstream communities. Um, right now we are focusing, because we need to start somewhere, on Intel's BMRA, bare metal reference architecture. So that is um, a cube spray based uh, Kubernetes deployer that has already uh, or that integrates already quite a few uh, telco specific extensions uh, as mentioned by Gage. Um, but other um, potential uh, deployers are the CNF testbed for instance or Aship. Right? So we, we basically consume those, we integrate those, um, provide a configuration um, that corresponds to the requirements of the reference architecture. Uh, and then obviously we deploy that continuously in uh, now starting in an open EV lab environment. 
Um, but as I said, could also be a bare metal cloud hardware provider um, or other cloud infrastructure providers where we deploy this on. Uh, that is still work to come. And once the platform has been deployed, obviously we need to run the testing against it. And on the lower part of the slide, you can see that we are um, using, making use of funk test and cross testing, uh, an OpenAV tool chain developed over the uh, previous years. Um, it is basically a generic framework that allows to uh, integrate and to yeah, integrate arbitrary uh, existing test tools and test frameworks coming from various upstream communities and projects already and it provides basically a unified way of, of running those and it also provides a somewhat unified uh, way of obtaining test results because as I said on the previous slide we need to review the test results as part of the OVP process. So the testing results then obviously are feedback both to the reference architecture because we can say, yeah, okay, this reference implementation um, it, yeah, is able to implement the, the requirements coming from, from the reference architecture. And also um, there's feedback to the reference conformance work by CNTT because we can say, yeah, okay, those the, the test scope basically that we have today covers these and those requirements of um, of the reference architecture and there for instance still those gaps that need to be closed and obviously we can also provide direct feedback to the test tools both um, in OpenAV and, and upstream as well as the installers in OpenAV as well as the, the upstream components. So that is basically the, the purpose of KubeRep, a little bit like the, the spider in the web here. Um, good, um, then on the next slide we zoom in a little bit more still. Um, the one important thing to mention here is the reference implementation um, needs to be somewhat flexible to cover various use cases. It, um, Gaga mentioned already the reference implementation is a proof that uh, the requirements coming out of the RA are actually implementable, um, but additional purposes that it serves is it needs to be uh, or it, it can be used to validate the test cases of RC2, obviously, but it is also um, a platform for uh, validating the workloads on. So this, this reference implementation potentially needs to be installable, for instance, in uh, vendor labs, uh, right? And then uh, vendors can test their workloads on top of that reference implementation. Um, so there is some flexibility needed uh, how to deploy this. So because of that, we have basically um, we're following an approach that um, splits the, the deployment and provisioning phase or process into two phases. Host provisioning in case we need to <clears throat> bring up the reference implementation on a bare metal environment. We have some tooling in place for that based on the Cloud Infra Automation Framework. Um, it's also based on previous efforts in OpenAV. Under the hood, it uses Bifrost basically to uh, do the, the host to as um, provisioning. And it also consumes an OpenAV descriptor, set of OpenAV descriptor files to describe the heart and the software. Um, and then the second step is the actual Kubernetes provisioning. And um, obviously, as I said, the first one is, is optional. Um, for instance, if you run, if you'd like to install the implementation on an infrastructure as a service um, infrastructure, then you often already get pre-provisioned host operating systems or VMs with OSs inside, obviously, so you can skip that. Um, the Kubernetes provisioning, as I said, currently is done using Intel's bare metal uh, reference architecture and it uses a cube spray as I mentioned under the hood uh, to configure everything and to install um, various add-ons and that is currently done in OpenAV labs. Good, um, so that's an overview of the infrastructure, um, no, the reference implementation, looking at the reference conformance on the next slide. Um, we have basically a very first release available already. Um, um, the approach here is, as I already mentioned, um, to leverage all of the various test cases, test suites available in, in various upstream communities. And we basically select 
those tests that cover RA requirements. And those uh, test cases then get integrated into the OpenAV func test and cross testing tool chain. Um, I have to um, <laughs> to give credits here to Cedric, who is uh, the, the func test PDL, basically doing all of that work. Um, and you can see in the table on the lower right corner what the first release of an RC2 um, yeah, suite basically contains. It um, starts with the Kubernetes conformance test suites um, that um, basically check or yeah, check that a Kubernetes installation provides the, uh, let's say, a standardized API. Um, there's more tooling um, included to exercise the API in kind of a benchmarking way. Xrelly is a tool to um, deploy certain scenarios, so going through a deployment and teardown of certain workloads, um, not just once, but also multiple times. Uh, we have security tests in place using Kube Hunter and Kube Bench. And um, last category, so to say, is the, the VIMS. This is a virtual IMS, um, which is a sample workload um, that gets deployed uh, and then some application level tests also run, just basically to validate that the, the targeted system on the test is capable of um, yeah, really hosting a sample workload. Um, as I said, that is the initial scope. Um, there's more that needs to be done. Um, and because of that, uh, this is also kind of a call for contributions to uh, to extend um, the test. Because only with the corresponding uh, automated test cases in place, we can basically deliver the, the promise of CNTT and OpenAV like end to end to have the compliance test suite in place. Good. Um, Going one slide further, there's one more thing <laughs> that we'd like to mention. Um, because you, um, well, we have been talking about um, this is being done in CNTT and that is being implemented in OpenAV and then you have requirements going back and forth. And obviously that is not the best way to do that. So both the technical communities of CNTT and OpenAV basically came together and we realized that we are basically in the same boat and we should work together even more closely as we're doing today. So both communities, both projects are going to, to merge um, to basically become a, the single organization where like the telcos, the vendors can come together and then de first define what infrastructures should look cloud infrastructure, techo cloud infrastructures should look like, um, and then implement those and provide the right testing uh, for that. Uh, that will that process is happening uh, right now, um, starting mid of 2020, and it is supposed to finish end of 2020. So the targeted launch date for the new project, and there's also going to be a new name for that, is January 2021. Um, and you're very welcome to join this effort of defining what the uh, the joint project will look like so that we can make sure that everybody's needs and requirements get um, well represented in, in this community effort to make sure that both operators and vendors um, basically get the most out of this uh, effort because that's that's the purpose of it. Good. And then the last slide um, is just a set of links. Uh, if you'd like to engage with the community, you can you can look at GitHub, you can join us on Slack, you can join the CNTT meetings, you can take a look at KubeRef. And um, in October this year, there's going to be a virtual developer event. Uh, so if you see this presentation still in time and the recording, uh, feel free to, um, to join that. Um, okay. And that basically concludes my part. Thank you. Thank you.